Hello, thank you for viewing this recycling and waste reduction video presentation from Pennsylvania Resources Council. We're so glad you've joined us in building a Pennsylvania where nothing is wasted. We'll start by touching on why we care about waste in the first place. Then we'll explore the hierarchy of waste and what we can do to divert waste in our own lives. After that, we'll dive into recycling, how it works, how it doesn't, why not all recyclables are created equal, and how to recycle at home. We'll focus on curbside and drop-off recycling, including what gets recycled where and what state it needs to be in. And we'll also touch on some specialty recycling. Finally, we'll end with a few resources to help you with future recycling questions you may have. Let's get started. Since you're here, you probably have at least a few reasons that you care about reducing waste. One obvious reason is that it helps us conserve resources by limiting the need to go out and obtain new resources. For example, recycling aluminum takes 95% less energy than producing new aluminum from virgin ore, and aluminum can be recycled indefinitely. Another reason to reduce waste is to mitigate the impacts of climate change. Landfill emissions and waste incinerators produce two common greenhouse gases, methane and carbon dioxide, and are huge contributors to climate change. Environmental justice is another reason to reduce waste. The environmental dangers posed by resource extraction, hazardous waste disposal, and more disproportionately harm poor and marginalized communities. Reducing our waste responsibly and putting pressure on our leadership to do so is an important step in protecting the safety and quality of life of our fellow humans. Here's one example of how reducing waste can have far-reaching effects. In the United States, we waste nearly 40% of our food annually. That's 108 billion pounds of food wasted each year when it is spoiled in transit, rejected by retailers, left unharvested, thrown out by consumers, and more. This is a staggering amount, especially considering that 38 million Americans live with food insecurity, meaning they lack consistent access to enough food to live an active, healthy life. Almost a third of these people are children, and food insecurity also disproportionately affects seniors, Black, Indigenous, and people of color, and rural communities. One in every 11 people in Pennsylvania experiences food insecurity. If we recovered even half of the food our nation wastes annually, we would have enough food to provide three meals a day to every person experiencing food insecurity in America. A significant portion of this waste, 39% of it, is residential food waste, meaning it comes from average people like you and me. This means we can make a sizable dent in the food waste issue just by changing our habits. When we waste less food, we leave more to be rescued and rerouted to those who need it. We conserve natural resources by preventing the resources used to make that food, like water, from going to waste. And reducing food waste also keeps food out of landfills where it will rot and release greenhouse gases like methane. Food isn't the only thing that ends up in landfills unnecessarily. This graph from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency shows everything that ended up in our landfills in 2018, the most recent year the EPA has published data for. Right away, we see common recyclables like paper, metals, and plastics, along with materials that could be composted, like food scraps and yard trimmings. There are materials that perhaps could have been reused, like clothing or furniture, in short, there's a lot of potential for us to reduce the amount of material we waste. The hierarchy of waste shows both the steps we can take to reduce waste and how effective those steps are. The higher up we are on this inverted pyramid, the less energy goes to waste. We'll go over the whole pyramid and then we'll circle back to recycling for a deeper dive. The top level on our hierarchy of waste and the number one thing we can do to reduce waste is, of course, not to create it in the first place. Prevention means stopping waste before it happens. One easy way to prevent waste is by investing in reusable versions of things you use often. 
like water bottles, lunch boxes, straws, and sandwich wraps. Reusable shopping bags are another huge waste preventer. In fact, the average plastic shopping bag only gets used for 12 minutes before being disposed of. Single-use plastics like these grocery bags, along with things like toothpaste tubes, plastic packaging, and more, make up half of the 335 million tons of plastic trash our nation creates annually. As we know, food waste is a huge issue. Taking the time to plan out meals before grocery shopping can help us avoid purchasing unnecessary items that we end up throwing out later, especially produce. Most of us know that unperishable foods can be donated, but did you know that garden produce and even leftover catered food can be donated too? Ask food rescues in your area what kinds of foods they accept. Another little thing that goes a long way toward reducing waste is opting out of junk mail. Over 100 billion pieces of junk mail are sent out annually in the U.S. Not only does that amount of mailings use an estimated 111 million trees and enough water to fill 106,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools, these mailings also cost taxpayers over a quarter of a billion dollars annually to get rid of. That's a lot of money to pay for something you never asked for and don't want. PRC has some helpful links for opting out of junk mail under the Learn and Act menu above. If you can't get away without using an item in the first place, the next best thing is to use it more than once. Giving useful products a second life could mean using them for the same purpose, like storing beans in an empty pasta sauce jar or donating clothes your kids grew out of for someone else to wear. It could also mean repurposing items for a new function, like using toilet paper rolls as compostable planters or making a wallet out of retired ship sails. If you are a handy or crafty person, this is a great avenue to explore. There are tons of free project ideas online for creative reuse to get you started. The next level down in the hierarchy of waste is recycling. In recycling, products are broken down into their raw materials, and these materials are then used in the creation of new products. In just a couple slides, we'll look a little more closely at the process. In 1888, recycling became mandatory in Pennsylvania with the passing of Act 101, which requires all counties to develop plans for waste management. At the time, it was a landmark legislation that led the nation in municipal recycling and waste management. But today, Act 101 is woefully out of date. In May of 2022, Pennsylvania Resources Council released a report of the successes and shortcomings of Act 101. This report, created in partnership with Penn Environment Research and Policy Center, Unomia, and the Foundation for Pennsylvania Watersheds, provides a summary of the act, along with several program and policy recommendations for improving recycling in the future. We want to hear your thoughts, too. To access the report in full and share your own experience and recommendations, visit the Learn and Act portion of our website. Energy recovery is the last ditch effort toward getting something out of a useful product. Energy recovery relies on combustion to burn trash and convert the resulting energy into useful forms. For example, the heat created by burning trash may be used to create the steam that powers an electric generator. Energy recovery facilities aren't as common as landfills in the U.S. simply because the available space here makes it cheaper to build a landfill. Disposal in a landfill is the last possible stop for our waste. Landfills are designed based on standards set by the EPA that are meant to protect the surrounding environment by preventing trash, gases, and leached liquids from escaping. Because of this, Landfills are effectively dry tombs where no decomposition takes place and trash will never break down. Landfills are designed so that the trash is never recovered. This brings us to the end of our waste hierarchy. As promised, let's circle back to recycling and take a closer look. We now know that recycling means breaking down and processing used materials into new products. 
And recycling is just that, a cycle. We purchase a product, use it, and put it in the recycling. The materials in that recycling then are collected and taken to a materials recovery facility where they're sorted, bundled, and baled. These bales of raw materials are then purchased by factories that turn them into new products to be purchased by us, the consumers. The astute viewer will have noticed from this cycle that recycling is a commodity market. Factories will only make products out of recycled materials as long as they're able to sell those products. That means it's important to show with our own dollars that we want to prioritize using recycled materials. Everything pictured here is made of something that can be recycled in Pennsylvania. Glass bottles and metal cans are often reformed into the same product because of how stable those materials are for reuse. The box of paper pictured is from PRC's 100% Recycled Paper Co-op, which makes recycled office paper more affordable in partnership with American Eagle Paper Mills. The socks were once plastic bottles and the picnic bench was thousands of plastic grocery bags. The cooler and dishes are also recycled plastic and could make a nice recycled picnic set. It used to be the norm to separate all recyclables before they could go to a recycling center. This is called source separation. And while it's still required in some areas of the state, much of Pennsylvania has adopted single stream recycling instead. Single stream recycling allows all recyclables to go into the same collection container. This is intended to make recycling easier for the average person by kicking the responsibility of sorting down the road to the materials recovery facility. A positive of single stream recycling is that it is convenient to be able to put all of our recyclables into the same container. But single stream recycling has also led to a lot of confusion about which materials are accepted. And this has resulted in well-meaning people putting items into the recycling bin that are actually trash. Wish cycling is what we call putting trash in the recycling bin because we think it is or should be recyclable. Unfortunately, trash getting mixed in with recyclables can result in the contents of your recycling bin or even the entire collection truck ending up in the landfill. Contamination that makes its way to a materials recovery facility causes huge backlogs of materials that need to be sorted, which you can see on the left. In the photo on the right, contamination by trash liners and plastic grocery bags has jammed the sorting machine. When this happens, employees have to shut down the machine and climb onto the sorting table to cut away the plastic bags with electric saws. This happens several times per day and can really slow down the recycling process. These days, recycling is in transition. The rise of contamination in the recycling stream has led to a decline in the quality of recyclables over the decades. As a result, clean recyclables have become harder and harder to come by and are in high demand. Shifts in the global recycling market have also left the US struggling to process heavy volumes of paper and plastic that are no longer being purchased by materials recovery facilities overseas. The good news is that this presents a golden opportunity for us to develop more efficient recycling methods and opportunities for using recycled materials. Like everything else though, good recycling starts at home. For the rest of the presentation, we'll focus on recycling at home. We'll look at materials that are commonly collected in curbside recycling and the little details that make a big difference, like whether we leave lids on or off. There are plenty of things we can't recycle curbside, but we may have other recycling options for, and we'll cover those too. Unfortunately, this isn't an exhaustive review of state recycling standards because services vary so much by municipality. If you have any specific questions about recycling in your county, we recommend contacting your county recycling coordinator directly. Every county has one and their contact information can be found on the Pennsylvania DEP website. The four recyclables we can reliably put curbside in Pennsylvania include some plastics, metal cans, cardboard, and mixed paper. We'll dive into each of these categories in just a moment, but first there are a few things we need to keep in mind that will help us avoid contamination. 
These are some good rules of thumb for keeping our recyclables usable. First, never, ever, ever put plastic bags in the recycling bin. We've seen how this wreaks havoc on material recovery facilities. All your recyclables should go into the bin loose. No greasy or dirty items. This is especially important for absorbent materials like cardboard. Make sure to scrape, wipe, or rinse recyclables clean. They don't need to be dishwasher clean, but we shouldn't be putting food in our recycling bin. No to-go containers. To-go containers are either made of polystyrene, which isn't recyclable curbside, or compostable materials, which have a water-resistant coating that keeps us from being able to recycle them, even if they're otherwise paper. Similarly, paper cups have an extra water-resistant layer that prevents them from being recyclable. Plastic cups are either too flimsy to be marketable as a recycled material, or they're made of compressed polystyrene. Solo cups are actually made of polystyrene. No aseptic containers, also called Tetra Packs. These are shelf-stable cartons that you often find soups and dairy alternatives in. While there seem to be emerging markets for these as recyclables, aseptic containers currently aren't accepted most places because the multiple layers of different material are too difficult to separate. Finally, some packaging is marketed as recyclable even when there isn't a market for those recycled materials, meaning they end up in the landfill. This is a wish cycling trap. Don't fall for it. Let's start our curbside focus on what is probably the most confusing recyclable out there, plastic. There are many different materials and qualities of materials that go into plastics, and that can make it hard to know what is accepted in our curbside recycling. Even more confusing is that little number on the bottoms of our plastic containers. Instead of telling you that the product is recyclable, like anyone might assume, that little number is actually the code for the type of plastic used. While this code provides information that can help us recycle, it isn't a guarantee of a recyclable product. When it comes to the recycling process, the biggest issue is that plastic can only ever be recycled into a material of poorer quality. This is called downcycling, and it means that the quality of plastic deteriorates the more it gets recycled unlike, for example, glass, which is infinitely recyclable. Because plastic recycling is always a battle against diminishing quality, most recycling programs only want thicker, higher quality plastics, like jugs and bottles. This is why we can't recycle plastics like disposable cups and clamshells. There just isn't a market for the material. Plastic tubs are usually not recyclable curbside either because they are a different type of plastic. They're usually number fives, while our recyclable plastic tends to be ones and twos. Lids can be a tricky one. Plastic lids should never go into your recycling bin loose. In some municipalities, you should screw the lid onto the container after you rinse it and recycle the whole thing. In others, the lids can't be recycled at all and should be thrown in the trash. Check with your municipality. Labels, on the other hand, are easy. Labels can stay on. The paper and glue are removed with heat during the recycling process. Things get less confusing from here. Like with our plastics, it's perfectly fine to leave labels on your metal cans before putting them in the bin. In some municipalities, loose metal lids are accepted curbside. In others, lids are only accepted if they are still attached to the can. Empty aerosol cans are accepted curbside in some municipalities, but a full or partially full aerosol can is always considered hazardous household waste and should be disposed of properly. Scrap metal is a valuable recyclable material but isn't accepted curbside for safety reasons. When recycling cardboard, you can leave labels on as well. While well, you can also leave the tape on, removing it will help the materials recovery facilities be a little more efficient in the long run. Flatten your boxes to save space in your bin and stack the cardboard next to your bin if it doesn't fit. You can also stack all of your flattened boxes into another unflattened box for convenience. 
Finally, while we shouldn't put wet cardboard in our recycling bins because it can clog recycling machinery, it's okay if your pile of cardboard gets a little wet in the rain waiting for pickup. This happens at recycling centers too, and the cardboard will be usable when it dries. Mixed paper includes things like office paper, magazines, paperboard, paperback and sometimes hardcover books, paper bags, junk mail, and other similar items. Mixed paper does not include wax-coated paper like juice cartons. It does not include thermal printed paper like receipts and airline tickets. It also does not include plastic lined paper like frozen food boxes. That's right, frozen food boxes are lined with plastic to resist water and belong in the landfill. Most municipalities do not accept shredded paper curbside, although a few do. For larger volumes of mixed paper, drop-off bins are also commonly found at schools, government buildings, and houses of worship. As a rule of thumb, it's better to accidentally put a recyclable in the trash and send one item to the landfill than it is to accidentally put trash in the recycling bin and send the whole thing to the landfill. Aim for quality recycling. When in doubt, throw it out. Bridging the gap between our curbside recyclables and our drop-off recyclables is glass, which is accepted curbside in some areas of the state and not in others. Glass is the poster child of the recycling game. As long as it's recycled correctly, that is without contamination, glass can be recycled infinitely by crushing it into smooth pebbles called cullet that can be made into new materials. The market for glass has always been a domestic one, so it has also remained stable and unaffected by recent global market transitions. Hearing this, you may be wondering, if glass is so great, why can it be so hard to recycle in the first place? Unfortunately, glass collected via single stream recycling is very dirty and requires extra processing by material recovery facilities to be usable in new products. Since this processing is costly and Pennsylvania law doesn't currently prohibit landfilling glass, many facilities simply choose not to accept it for recycling. Glass collected via source separated recycling, on the other hand, is so clean that almost 100% of it can be made into cullet for new bottles, jars, fiberglass, and more. This source separated glass recycling might be found at a collections event, a drop off at your local recycling center, or even PRC's traveling glass bin. The traveling glass bin provides a no contact source separated glass drop off around southwestern Pennsylvania with plans to expand. The bin stays in one location for a week at a time and is emptied every Friday before moving to a new location. This effort has been a huge undertaking between PRC and area councils of government, and it has also been a huge success. Thanks to the groundbreaking work on this project, other states are looking to start their own similar programs. To learn more about the traveling glass bin and where it's headed next, visit the collection events portion of our website. Many items that aren't recyclable curbside can be dropped off at designated locations to be recycled. Some of the items purchased here, like televisions, are even required to be recycled by law. Plastic bags and films can be dropped off at many grocery store chains, including Giant Eagle. Unfortunately, Giant Eagle has stopped accepting bubble wrap in their plastic film drop-off. CFL light bulbs can be recycled at hardware stores like Lowe's. CFL light bulbs and batteries can both be recycled at Batteries Plus Bulbs. Depending on where you live, these and other items here can be dropped off at your local recycling center, a private business, or a collections event. Collections events for hazardous household wastes, e-waste, and hard to recycle items can be found all around the state. Some are restricted to residents, so always make sure you're looking at the most up-to-date details. Remember, your county recycling coordinator is a great resource. PRC also holds collections events throughout the year, primarily in southwestern Pennsylvania. You can find more information about our hazardous household waste, e-waste, and hard to recycle collections under the collection events menu on the website. 
A few of us may have access to some recycling opportunities that aren't yet very widespread. Cooking oil can be recycled as an alternative fuel and may be accepted either at a business that specializes in veggie oil fuel or by a company that helps restaurants process their waste oil. Pharmaceuticals can cause environmental hazards when thrown in the landfill or flushed down the toilet. So these should be disposed of at a drug take-back program, which could be a collection event or a box at your local police station. Kitchen scraps make up almost a quarter of our nation's annual landfill waste, but you might help reduce that number by composting at home or through a local business. PRC Zero Waste Kit Rental is one service that can help you add composting to your waste reduction plans. Available so far in southwestern Pennsylvania, the kit provides an easy way for events of 250 people or fewer to make sure nothing goes to the landfill unnecessarily. The kit includes containers and signage for collecting compost, recycling, and landfill materials, and also provide compost to disposal through AgRecycle. To learn more about the Zero Waste Kit Rental, visit the Zero Waste Pennsylvania portion of our website. Here are a few additional resources to help you seek out more information about recycling. The DEP Recycling Hotline answers questions about recycling all over the state of Pennsylvania. The name and contact information of your county recycling coordinator can be found on the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection's website or by following the link below. Finally, this website is full of information about recycling events, best practices, policy recommendations, and more. Please feel free to reach out to us with any questions or comments. Thank you again for viewing Pennsylvania Resources Council's Recycling and Waste Reduction webinar. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and learned something new to help us build a Pennsylvania where nothing is wasted.